The next point we're going to look at is Q-Ben, stomach 12. So this point is located in the supraclavicular fossa, posterior to the midpoint of the clavicle. So if we look here at the image on the right, this here is the supraclavicular fossa, this fossa over here. And then we've got to be posterior to the midpoint of the clavicle. So what you're going to do is, like we talked about earlier, you're going to find the medial border of the clavicle and then the lateral border of the clavicle and divide this distance in half. And then we're going to go superior to this so that we're still within the supraclavicular fossa. And if you remember what we said is that the length of the clavicle is 8 sin, so the midpoint would be 4 sin, and this is why we would be 4 sin lateral to the midline. So most of the indications relating to this point is around its location. Because it's local to the lung area, it can be used for cough, tachypnea, and because it's close to the throat, it can be used for sore throats. It can also be used for pain in the supraclavicular fossa. And then thirdly, it can be used for scrofula. Our insertion is a perpendicular insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 tun. One thing I want you to note here is that there's a caution against deep or posterior insertions as both may injure the subclavian vessels or puncture the lungs. So if we look at this image I brought here, so what we're going to do is look at where the point is located. So here's the lateral end of the clavicle and the medial end. We're going to go to the midpoint and then we're going to go just superior to this midpoint over here. So that means this point is in this region. And as you can see, in this region there's the brachial plexus and here over here is the subclavian artery. Obviously it's running behind the clavicle and there's the subclavian vein. So this is why we say deep insertions because if, for instance, the patient's vein was running more in this direction, a deep insertion might puncture it. And then the posterior insertions refers to insertion going posterior to the clavicle. So it would be going in this direction like this and then would go behind the clavicle. And as you can see that both the subclavian artery and vein are both posterior to the clavicle as well as the lungs are located in this region around here. And that is why we caution against doing a posterior insertion to the clavicle or doing a deep insertion as this may also have a similar effect. The next point is Chi Hu, stomach 13. So this point is located on the inferior border of the clavicle at its midpoint. So similar to the previous point, we're going to find the midpoint of the clavicle. And this time we're just going to its inferior border. So this would be the inferior border over here. And we're going to be just inferior to that border. And this is a, once again, fort soon lateral to the midline. This point can be used locally for cough, tachypnea and hiccups. It can also be used for other diseases due to disharmony of the ascending and descending of chi. And then thirdly, it can be used for chest pain and fullness. Our insertion is an oblique or horizontal insertion in a lateral direction, 0.3 to 0.5 tun. So what we're referring to here is that the insertion direction would be in this direction, yeah, like this. Because as you can see from the image, the lungs are lying here. So if we insert in this direction, we're avoiding the possibility of puncturing the lungs. And you can see from our caution here that we caution against deep or perpendicular insertions as both carry a substantial risk of puncturing the lungs. Or remember if we look here again at this image, he has the subclavian vessels over here. So this point is now midpoint of the clavicle and just below it, it's right over here. So if we do a deep insertion, there's a much greater risk of injuring the subclavian arteries as they run deep to this point. And you can also see in this image where the lungs are. So if the insertion is deeper, it might go between one of the ribs and puncture the lungs. And if we go in this direction, you can see that there's no important blood vessels or organs in this region. The next point is Kufang, stomach 14. So this point is located in the first intercostal space, four tsun to the midline. So from earlier in the lecture slides, remember we talked about the flow of the meridian on the chest and that all the points are four tsun lateral to the midline up until the fifth intercostal space. So remember this location here, the four tsun lateral to the anterior midline, will be shared by all the future points and the previous two points 
up until we reach the fifth intercostal space, which is over here. So the only thing you need to note on these points is then which intercostal space each point lies in. So for Ku Feng, it's in the first intercostal space. The indications for Ku Feng, it can be used for cough or tachypnea, any other diseases of the lungs, and chest pain and fullness. Our insertion is an oblique or horizontal insertion in a lateral direction, 0.3 to 0.5 turn. So similar to the previous point, we're going in this direction away from the lungs. And again, the same caution against deep or perpendicular insertions as both carry the risk of puncturing the lungs. The next point is Wu Yi, stomach 15. So this point is now in the second intercostal space and it's still on that fourth soon line. The indications for this point, similar to the previous one, it can be used locally for cough or tachypnea, chest pain and fullness, but can also be used for hypochondrium or mammary abscesses. Our insertion is oblique horizontal insertion laterally, 0.3 to 0.5 tun. This is the same as the previous points and the same caution against deep or perpendicular insertions. The next point is Ying Chuang, stomach 16. This point is now in the third intercostal space over here. And once again, it's four tsun lateral to the midline. So remember, we find the lateral end and the medial end of the clavicle, and then we find its midpoint, and then we just follow this line down. And that's how we're going to find the four tsun lateral to the midline mark. This point is used locally for cough and tachypnea, chest pain and fullness, and mammary abscesses. The insertion is the same as the previous points. It's an oblique or horizontal insertion in a lateral direction, 0.3 to 0.5 tun, and our same caution against the deep and perpendicular insertions. The next point is Ru Zhong. This is stomach 17. This point is in the fourth intercostal space at the very center of the nipple, 4 tun lateral to the midline. So remember, as I said earlier, that the nipple is not always four tsun lateral to the midline. So this is why we don't use the nipple as a guide when we're measuring these points. But this point, Ru Zhong, is not actually a point which we needle. This point is used mostly as a landmark for locating other points on the chest and abdomen. And this would only be applicable in patients where you have measured the clavicle and you've found that four tsun of the clavicle is the same as the four tsun of the nipple. Then you could use this as a landmark. Next point is Rugen, stomach 18. So remember, this is the last point still fought soon lateral to the anterior midline, and it's in the fifth intercostal space. So that line we did was going all the way down like this, and then at this point, they're going to start moving medially and move to the tutsun mark. So the rest of the points will now be tutsun. This point can be used for hypochondrium and mammary abscesses because it's local to the breasts. It can also be used for cough, tachypnea, and hiccups and chest pain as it's local to the chest region. Our insertion is oblique or horizontal insertion in a lateral direction, 0.3 to 0.5 tsun. And once again, the caution is against deep or perpendicular insertions as this carries a risk of puncturing the lungs. The next point is Burong, stomach 19. This point is now located on the upper abdomen and we're now using a slightly different way to locate these points. Remember, they're now two tsun lateral to the midline, and it's six tsun superior to the umbilicus. So what you need to do is you first need to locate the umbilicus down here, and then you need to locate the suprasternal angle, which is the angle over here. And then do you remember what this distance is? So this distance is eight tsun, and what we've got to do now is then divide it in half like this. So that would give us four tsun, so there'd be four tsun below and four tsun above. And then you're going to take the upper half and divide it in half again. And then what this allows us to do is that we know from here to here is four tsun. And then from here to here will now be two tsun. So if we add the four plus the two tsun, that gives us the six tsun above the umbilicus, which is where this point is located. And then how we find the two tsun lateral to the midline mark is we go back to the clavicle. We find the medial end of the clavicle and its lateral end, we then locate the midpoint of the clavicle, and then from the midpoint to the medial end, we divide that in half again, like this, and then this gives us the two tsun lateral to the midline mark. And we can then follow this mark all the way down 
And where this line intersects the six tune line we've just done is where this point is located. So what I want you to note here is the indications now change from the previous points. Because of the location change, this point can be used for conditions affecting the abdominal region, such as abdominal distension, vomiting, gastric pain, and anorexia. Our insertion is perpendicular, 0.5 to 0.8 sin. That's another difference that you can note here. We can now start using perpendicular insertions, and the depth is slightly deeper than the previous points. The next point is Cheng Man, stomach 20. This point is also on the upper abdomen, 5 tun superior to the umbilicus. So we're going to use the similar method to the previous one, where we locate the umbilicus and the suprasternal angle, and then we divide this distance in half, which will give us 4 tun superior to the umbilicus, and then we just go 1 tun superior to this. And then we locate the 2 tun mark the same way I mentioned in the previous slide, and where these two lines meet, is where Cheng Men Stomach 20 is situated. This point is also used for stomach problems such as epigastric pain, hematomesis, and anorexia. Our insertion is perpendicular, 0.5 to 1 tun. And then the caution here is that we got to be careful in patients with either hepatomegaly, which is an enlarged liver, or patients who have just eaten a large meal. So the reason for this is if you look at this image I've just brought in, this here is the liver. So when we refer to hepatomegaly, we're specifically referring to the right side of the body because the left side is less likely to puncture the liver, but it does depend on how enlarged the liver is. So if the liver is this size, our point would be around about, here's the suprasternal angle. Let's say the umbilicus is around about here. So we're going to go midway, and then we've got to go one tun up and two tun lateral. So our point would probably be around this location. So if you see, it's just underneath where the liver normally runs. But if the liver was enlarged, it would firstly then expand downwards like this and be more in this region, depending on how enlarged it is. It would also then be creating more pressure in the abdomen and therefore might be closer to the surface of the body. Both these then pose a greater risk of us puncturing the liver when we insert deeply. And a similar effect will be seen when a patient eats a large meal. If we refer back to this image, here is the stomach in this region. As you can see, it is very close to where this point is. And if the patient had eaten a large meal, the stomach will expand and be more in this region. And also will be creating greater pressure and thus be closer to the surface of the stomach. And therefore, once again, pose a risk of getting punctured if we insert too deeply. So in both these instances, our options are either firstly to think of using a different point rather than this point or we have to be extra cautious and go to a much shallower insertion and this will be dependent on how enlarged either the stomach is or the liver is. Our next point is Liang Meng, stomach 21. This point is on the upper abdomen, 4 tun superior to the umbilicus, 2 tun lateral to the midline. So what we do is we find the umbilicus as we did with the previous points. Then we find the suprasternal angle. We go to the midpoint of these two. That's our four tun, and then we just have to go two tun lateral using the clavicle. Where these two lines meet is this point. This point can be used for epigastric pain, vomiting, and anorexia. Our insertion is perpendicular one to 1.5 tun. So note that the insertion is now getting slightly deeper as we're getting further away from the lungs and the important organs. But once again, we've got to keep that same caution in mind in patients with either hepatomegaly or who have eaten a large meal. The next point is Guan Men, stomach 22. So this point is located on the upper abdomen, 3 tsun superior to the umbilicus, 2 tsun lateral to the midline. So same as the previous points, find the two lines, firstly the 2 tsun lateral to the midline, and then we've got to go 3 tsun superior, where these two lines meet is stomach 22. This point can be used for epigastric pain, abdominal distension and pain, vomiting, anorexia, diarrhea, borborygmus, and edema. And what I want you to note here is that these points that were above stomach 22, so we're in this region here on the stomach, will have indications related to those organs. So that will be indications related to the spleen and stomach. And that will be symptoms such as epigastric pain, 
abdominal distension, vomiting, and anorexia. Whereas the points going down to the lower abdomen region, so this region down here, may still have one or two functions affecting the upper organs, but their functions will generally be more related to the organs in this region, which is the intestines, and therefore it will be more symptoms such as diarrhea, constipation, or borborygmus, which are conditions which affect these intestines. And because this point is the junction between the two regions, it can be used for both the upper abdomen and lower abdominal problems. Our insertion on this point is perpendicular 1 to 1.5 tsun, and that's the same as the previous points. The next point is Tai Yi, stomach 23. It is located on the upper abdomen, 2 tsun superior to the umbilicus, and 2 tsun lateral to the anterior midline. This point's indication is epigastric pain, vomiting, vexation, epilepsy, and mania. And our insertion is perpendicular 1 to 1.5 tsun. The next point is Hua Rou Men, stomach 24. This point is on the abdomen, 1 tsun superior to the umbilicus, so 1 tsun upwards, and 2 tsun lateral to the midline. This point's indications is epigastric pain, vomiting, epilepsy, and mania. Our insertion is perpendicular 1 to 1.5 tsun. Our next point is Tian Shu, stomach 25. So this point is a front mu point of the large intestine and is located on the abdomen, two tsun lateral to the center of the umbilicus. So you have to locate the umbilicus and its center and then go two tsun lateral to this. So the indications of this point, firstly, let's look at the category. This point is a front mu point of the large intestine. So can anyone remember the function of front mu points? So front mu points are points where the qi of the zhang fu organ infuses on the anterior portion of the body. And this one is specifically the front mu point of the large intestine. So what this means is that this point can be used to treat disorders affecting the large intestine. And we can see a few such disorders in the indications. These are disorders such as bacillary dysentery, paralytic ileus, abdominal pain and distension, diarrhea, and constipation. And then this point can also be used for acute or chronic enteritis or gastritis. And then secondly, it can be used for dysmenorrhea or irregular menstruation. One more thing I want you to note here is that this point is a good example of a special function of acupuncture points. And this is the ability of acupuncture points to treat opposing conditions. As you can see here, Tian Shu can use, be used for diarrhea or for constipation. And these are what we consider opposing conditions as they are opposite to one or another. And then our needling is perpendicular insertion 1 to 1.5 tsun. The next point is Wei Ling, stomach 26. This point is located on the lower abdomen, 1 tsun inferior to the umbilicus and still 2 tsun lateral to the midline. So this point can be used for abdominal pain, hernias, and dysmenorrhea. Our insertion is perpendicular 1 to 1.5 tsun. Our next point is Da Ju, stomach 27. This point is on the lower abdomen, 2 tsun inferior to the umbilicus, and 2 tsun lateral to the anterior midline. So let's just discuss how this point would be found. So here's the umbilicus over here. Then we've got to find the pubic symphysis over here. And what we've got to do is this distance we know to be 5 tsun. So we divide this distance into 5 equal parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And each one of these parts is 1 tsun. So the previous point, stomach 26, would have been at the first portion over here. And then we would have to go 2 tsun lateral, which would put it in this region. This point is now 2 tsun inferior. So we have to go one, two sections down, and then two tsun lateral, which would put it in this region. And we'll do the same for the points to follow. This point can be used for lower abdominal distension, dysuria, hernias, and seminal emissions. And remember, as I said earlier, that the points indications change according to which organs lie around these points. So if you think of this point, think about which organs lie in this part of the body. 
and that will help you to remember some of the functions. As we know, the dysuria, the bladder is close to this point in this region. And then these points are also getting close to the reproductive organs. And that's why you'll start to see reproduction indications. The insertion on this point is a perpendicular insertion, 1 to 1.5 tin. The next point is Shui Dao, stomach 28. This point is now on the lower abdomen, 3 tin inferior to the umbilicus. So remember, we divided that portion into 5, and we've got to go 3 portions down, 1, 2, 3. Three, and then we must go two to lateral to the midline. This point can be used for lower abdominal distension, dysuria, hernias, and then dysmenorrhea and ascites. Our insertion is still perpendicular, 1 to 1.5 twin. And then our caution here is against deep insertions as these may penetrate a full bladder. So when using this point and a few other points in this region, what we do is we'll check that with our patients that they do not need to urinate as a full bladder would cause the bladder to enlarge and therefore deeper insertions carry a much greater risk of puncturing the bladder. The next point is Gui Lai, stomach 29. This point is located on the lower abdomen, 4 tsun inferior to the umbilicus and 2 tsun lateral to the midline, putting us in this region. This point can be used for lower abdominal distension, hernias, irregular menstruation and leucorrhea and then also for prolapse of the uterus. Our insertion is still the same as all the previous points. It's perpendicular, 1 to 1.5 tsun. And then the same caution as the previous point against deep insertions on patients with a full bladder. The next point is Chi Chong, stomach 30. This point is located on the lower abdomen. We're now 5 tsun inferior to the umbilicus, and we're 2 tsun lateral to the midline. So what this means is that we are level with the upper border of the pubic symphysis. So he has the pubic symphysis, so we're on its upper border, and we level with the upper border, and then we've got to go two tsun lateral to this to find this point. All the indications for this point are around its location. Firstly, it can be used for low abdominal pain or borborygmus. It can also be used for hernias, and then for male or female reproductive problems, such as irregular menstruation, leukorrhea, swelling of the vulva, and then in males, impotence or erectile dysfunction. Our insertion is still perpendicular, 1 to 1.5 tun. And once again, we've got a caution here against deep insertion, but yeah, it's in a superior direction as the bladder lies superior to this point around in this region. So only if we're doing a superior insertion will this have the risk of penetrating the bladder. So the next point we're going to look at is Big One, stomach 31. So now the points have moved to the anterior thigh, and this point is located in a depression just lateral to the sartorius muscle. So if you look at the image here on the right, this image shows you a brief outline of the sartorius muscle, this muscle over here. And then I've also brought in another image now just to give you a more clear view of how the sartorius muscle looks and where it runs. So what you can see is that it originates on the anterior superior iliac spine over here and runs down in the front of the leg and moves from the lateral side of the leg to the medial side of the leg, wrapping around the vastus medialis muscle and ending just below the knee. So when we're locating this point, we must try and ensure that we are just lateral to this muscle. And then the next thing that we've got to do is we've got to draw a line down from the anterior superior iliac spine. So that's this bone here. And we're going to draw a line down just like the image shows. And then we've got to draw another line from the lower border of the pubic symphysis. One thing I want you to note here as well is that it's now the lower border of the pubic symphysis. So when we were locating the points on the lower abdomen, we were actually using the umbilicus and the upper border of the pubic symphysis to find those measurements. And now we're using the lower border of the pubic symphysis. So just remember, this has a slightly different location to the upper border of the pubic symphysis. And then once we have located the lower border of the pubic symphysis, we also draw a line laterally from this point. And then where this line meets the anterior superior iliac spines line is where this point is located. This point can be used for paralysis of the legs, lower back pain, cold invasion of the knees, 
and other diseases of the lower extremities. Our insertion, because we are moving into the large muscular areas of the legs, the insertions are much deeper, and this point has a 1 to 2 tsun insertion. Our next point is futu, stomach 32. So this point is also located on the anterior thigh, and it's on a line connecting the anterior superior iliac spine. So like in the previous point when we found this bone here, the anterior superior iliac spine, so we locate this point and then we also need to locate the lateral border of the patella down here and we draw the line connecting these two points and then the second thing we do to locate where along this line the points are we have to move six sun superior to the superior border of the patella so he has the superior border of the patella and we've got to go six sun superior to this and how we determine six sun is if you remember from your point location lectures, the distance from the superior border of the pubic symphysis to the upper border of the medial epicondyle of the femur, which is very similar location to the upper border of the patella, which is around here, this distance is 18 tun. So what we've got to do is we've got to locate these two points and then divide this distance into three equal parts, like this, and then this point will be on the lower third over here. This point can be used for paralysis of the legs, lower back pain, cold invasion of the knee, and other diseases of the lower extremities. And then it can also be used for hernias. Our insertion is similar to the previous point. It's a perpendicular insertion, 1 to 2 tsun. The next point is yin chi, stomach 33. So this point is also located on the anterior thigh and is located with the knee flexed it would be 3 tsun superior to the lateral superior border of the patella. So we take the lateral border and the superior border, and where they combine is what they're referring to. And then once again, we're going to take the lateral border of the patella and the anterior superior iliac spine up here and draw a line between these points. And then where along this line, we've got to go 3 tsun above. So 3 tsun above the patella, which will also be half the distance between the patella and stomach 32 up here. This point can be used for numbness, pain and motor impairment of the leg and knee and for hernias. Our insertion is perpendicular 1 to 1.5 tsun. Our next point is Liang Chiu, stomach 34. This is a she cleft point of the meridian and is located on the anterior thigh in the depression two tsun above the superior border of the patella. So we are on the leg and then we've got to locate the superior border of the patella up here and we've got to be two tsun above this. So one simple way of locating this point is that the length of the patella is measured at two tsun. So you could just take the length of the patella, this length here, and move this same distance above the patella and that would put you over here. And then you also need to ensure that you're on the lateral border of the patella. So here's the lateral border. And we've got to go directly superior to this. And then the indications for this point. So firstly, this point is a she cleft point. And if you remember from your previous lectures, she cleft points functions are, they are used to treat acute conditions. And if we look at the first indication here, acute gastric pain. This is a very specific indication for this point and it's very effective for this type of pain. So if a patient is presenting with acute stomach ache or acute gastric pain, this is a very good point to use. This point can also be used locally for diseases of the knee, paralysis of the legs and diseases of the lower limbs. And finally, it can be used for mammary abscesses and breast pain. And if you've noticed, our insertion is going to be slightly shallower than the previous points because we're moving away from the muscular parts of the leg towards the knee. So it's a perpendicular insertion, 1 to 1.2 tsun. The next point is dubi, stomach 35. So this point is on the anterior knee in a depression directly below the patella, lateral to the patella ligament. So Dubi is an interesting point, stomach 35, as it actually has a partner point known as medial Xi'an, which is an extra point we will learn about in later lectures. And these two points are known as the eyes of the knees. 
as they are located on either side of the patellar ligaments and in thinner patients you'll see that these form depressions which make it look like an eye. And then of the two points you must remember that stomach 35 is on the lateral side. So we find the lower border of the patella over here so we know that we're below the patella and then we're going to palpate for the patella ligaments and we must be in the depression that is just lateral to this point. Doobie can be used for pain, numbness and motor impairments of the leg and knee. And then stomach 35 has a few different ways in which we can needle it. Firstly, we can do a perpendicular insertion, one to two tun, directed towards bladder 40. So we haven't done bladder 40 yet, but bladder 40 is behind the knee at the center of the popliteal crease. So that's around this region. So the angle is just going to be towards this point. And then the second insertion technique we can use is an oblique insertion medially and superiorly behind the patella, one to two tun. So that's more in this direction. And then the final insertion we can do is also an oblique insertion behind the patella ligament to join to medial shihan. So that would be in this direction. We're going behind this patella ligament and we're going towards this point over here. And then obviously the depth for this last method would be dependent on the size of the patient's knee and the size of their patella ligaments. The next point is Zusan Li, stomach 36. This point is the Hersi and earth point of the meridian. This point is located below the knee, three tsun inferior to stomach 35, do be. One finger breadth lateral to the anterior crest of the tibia in the tibialis anterior muscle. So if we look at the image here, we've got to first locate the line of the popliteal crease, which is level with stomach 35 up here. And then we've got to locate the lateral malleolus down here. And the distance between these points is 16 tun. Then what we've got to do is we divide this distance in half. That gives us 8 tun. And then in half again, which will give us 4 tun. And then from here, we go 1 tun superior to this to get to where this point is located. Then we have to palpate along the anterior portion of the leg and locate the anterior crest of the tibia over here. And then we must ensure that we one finger breadth lateral to this. And that's where this point is located. And then if you look at the indications, you can see that there's a lot of indications here for this point. It's a very important point and it's very commonly used. And there are a few things I want to talk about about this point. Firstly, the name of this point, Zhu San Li. So what this name means, it means leg three miles. Zhu San Li. And so Zhu is leg, San is three, and Li is the Chinese equivalent to a mile. It's a unit of measurement. And then there's a few different explanations as to why this point is called this. But one such explanation is the three miles refers to the three tsun below stomach 35 that this point is located at. And then also the other indications for this point, it can be used for acute and chronic gastritis or enteritis, gastric pain, vomiting, and dysphagia. It can also be used for abdominal distension, diarrhea, dysentery, and constipation. And then locally, it could be used for pain of the knee or leg and hemiplegia. Thirdly, it can be used for insomnia or mania. Fourthly, for mammary abscesses or acute appendicitis. And then finally, for consumptive diseases. And this is the one we were referring to when we said the patient is completely exhausted as a consumptive disease, which is any chronic disease which is weakening the patient. And then two other important points here is that this point is also one of Madan Yang's 11 heavenly star points, which you remember is the grouping of the 11 most vital points according to the famous physician Madan Yang. And then this point is also one of Gao Wu's four command points. And he said this point is used for any disorders affecting the abdomen. And then how we needle this point. So firstly, we can do a perpendicular insertion, 1 to 1.5 tsun. Or we can use moxibustion on this point. And moxibustion is commonly used when treating the consumptive diseases. And then one other common use of this point 
is for people who want to maintain health and prevent illness. The next point is Susan Lee, stomach 36. This point is the Hersey and earth point of the meridian. This point is located below the knee, three tsun inferior to stomach 35, do be. One finger breadth lateral to the anterior crest of the tibia in the tibialis anterior muscle. So if we look at the image here, we've got to first locate the line of the popliteal crease, which is level with stomach 35 up here. And then we've got to locate the lateral malleolus down here. And the distance between these points is 16 tun. Then what we've got to do is we divide this distance in half. That gives us 8 tun. And then in half again, which will give us 4 tun. And then from here, we go 1 tun superior to this to get to where this point is located. Then we have to palpate along the anterior portion of the leg and locate the anterior crest of the tibia over here. And then we must ensure that we one finger breadth lateral to this. And that's where this point is located. And then if you look at the indications, you can see that there's a lot of indications here for this point. It's a very important point and it's very commonly used. And there are a few things I want to talk about about this point. Firstly, the name of this point, Zhu San Li. So what this name means, it means leg three miles. Zhu San Li. And so Zhu is leg, San is three, and Li is the Chinese equivalent to a mile. It's a unit of measurement. And then there's a few different explanations as to why this point is called this. But one such explanation is the three miles refers to the three tsun below stomach 35 that this point is located at. And then also the other indications for this point, it can be used for acute and chronic gastritis or enteritis, gastric pain, vomiting, and dysphagia. It can also be used for abdominal distension, diarrhea, dysentery, and constipation. And then locally, it could be used for pain of the knee or leg and hemiplegia. Thirdly, it can be used for insomnia or mania. Fourthly, for mammary abscesses or acute appendicitis. And then finally, for consumptive diseases. And this is the one we were referring to when we said the patient is completely exhausted as a consumptive disease, which is any chronic disease which is weakening the patient. And then two other important points here is that this point is also one of Maran Yang's 11 heavenly star points, which you remember is the grouping of the 11 most vital points according to the famous physician Maran Yang. And then this point is also one of Gao Wu's four command points. And he said this point is used for any disorders affecting the abdomen. And then how we needle this point. So firstly, we can do a perpendicular insertion, 1 to 1.5 tsun. Or we can use moxibustion on this point. And moxibustion is commonly used when treating the consumptive diseases. And then one other common use of this point is for people who want to maintain health and prevent illness. And then the next point is Shang Ju Shu, stomach 37. So this point is the lower Hersey point of the large intestine. And it is located on the lower leg, 6 sun inferior to stomach 35 or 3 tsun inferior to stomach 36 and it's still one finger breadth lateral to the anterior crest of the tibia. So very similar to the previous point we locate the popliteal crease, the lateral malleolus and then we divide this distance in half which will be the 8 tsun and then we can go 2 tsun superior to this to get to where this point is located. The indications for this point, it can be used for abdominal pain and distension. And then because it's a lower Hersey point of the large intestine, it can also be used for dysfunction in the large intestine. And that's why it can be used for symptoms such as borborygnus, diarrhea, dysentery, constipation, and enteritis. And finally, it can be used locally for paralysis or pain of the lower limbs. Our insertion is a perpendicular insertion, one to two tsun. The next point is Tiao Ko, stomach 38. This point is located on the lower leg, 8 sun below stomach 35, or the popliteal crease up here, at the midpoint between stomach 35 and the lateral malleolus. 
one finger breadth lateral to the anterior crease of the tibia. So once again, we locate the popliteal crease over here, the lateral malleolus, and then we just divide this distance in half, and this point is one finger breadth lateral to the anterior crest of the tibia over here. And then this point's indications, firstly, it's used for pain and motor impairment of the shoulder and abdominal pain. And if we go back to the first indication, the pain and motor impairment of the shoulder, this point is actually a special point used in shoulder conditions, especially shoulder pain. And you should remember it as an important point for treating any type of shoulder pain. And when we do this treatment for the shoulder pain, we do a special insertion. And this insertion is mentioned here on the through needling technique. This is where we insert a longer needle between two to three tsun needle from stomach 38 through to bladder 57, which is at the back of the calf, and we'll learn about later. And then what we do is we do a strong manipulation on this point and ask our patient to move their shoulder. And what you should see happen is that the patient's pain should either be reduced or their range of motion should be increased. And this movement will also help to promote blood flow and the movement of chi in the shoulder region. And then our second insertion method is just a perpendicular insertion, 1 to 1 1.5 ton. Our next point is Jia Chu Shu, stomach 39. This is the lower Hersey point of the small intestine and is located on the lower leg, 9 ton below stomach 35, one finger breadth lateral to the anterior crest of the tibia. So once again, we locate the popliteal crease up here, the lateral malleolus. We divide this distance in half, and then we one soon below this distance. This point can be used for low abdominal pain, diarrhea, or dysentery. And once again, this is related to it being the lower Hersey point of the small intestine. And then locally, it can be used for numbness and paralysis of the lower extremities and mammary abscesses. Our insertion is perpendicular. 1 to 1.5 tsun. The next point is Feng Long, stomach 40. So this is a Luau connecting point of the meridian. And can anyone remember the function of Lao connecting points? So these points link the exterior and interiorly related meridians. And then the location of this point. So this point is located on the lower leg, 8 tsun below stomach 35 at the midpoint between stomach 35 and the lateral malleolus, two finger breaths lateral to the anterior crest of the tibia. So what's happened is that the meridian has actually gone like this, and then to here to stomach 39, and then it's actually zigged back up to stomach 40, and then it will continue downwards. And how you locate this point is that you once again locate either stomach 35 or the popliteal crease up here, the lateral malleolus, Divide this distance in half, and then we're going to go two finger breaths instead of just one like all the other points. We're going to go two finger breaths lateral to the anterior crest of the tibia. And then because this point is a Luau connecting point of the stomach meridian, it means it can treat conditions affecting both the stomach meridian and the spleen meridian. So therefore, you must be aware of that when you look into the indications of this point. So the first set of indications, this point can be used for headache dizziness and vertigo can also be used for mental disorders and then it can be used for cough and other diseases associated with phlegm and this is an important use of this point it's often used for diseases associated with phlegm and then it can also be used locally for motor impairment pain and swelling of the lower extremities abdominal distension and constipation our insertion is a perpendicular insertion 1 to 1.5 tsun the next point is Jia Shi, stomach 41. So this is a Jing River and fire point of the meridian and is located on the dorsum of the foot, which is this portion of the foot. And it's at the midpoint of the transverse crease of the ankle joint, which is this crease here. And it's in the depression between the tendons of the extensor digitorum longus, this one here, and the helicis longus, which is this tendon over here. This point can be used for pain of the ankle joint, muscular atrophy or motor impairment, pain and paralysis of the lower extremities. It can also be used for headache, dizziness and vertigo, mental disorders, abdominal distension and constipation. 
our insertion is perpendicular 0.5 to 1 sin. So note that the insertion is now much shallower as we're now moving from the muscular area of the legs down to the ankle and the foot. And there's not a lot of flesh in these regions. So our insertions are going to be much shallower. One caution here is that the anterior tibial vessels lie deep to this point. So you must be cautious on your depth of insertion when inserting into this point. Our next point is Chongyang, stomach 42. This is the Yuan source point of the stomach meridian and it is located on the dorsal aspect of the foot, distal to stomach 41, at the highest point of the dorsum of the foot, in a depression between the second and third metatarsal bones and the cuneiform bones. So you have the two cuneiform bones, this bone and this bone. And we've got to be in the depression between these two bones and the junction between the second and third bones. So he has the second metatarsal and he has the third metatarsal. So where all four of these bones join, this is where this point is. And this point is usually at the highest point of the dorsum of the foot. So if you looked at the lateral part of the foot like this, it would be over here. And then the indications for this point, it can be used for epigastric pain, deviation of the mouth and eye, epilepsy and mania, and then locally for numbness or paralysis of the foot. Also note that because it's a urine source point of the stomach meridian, can you be used for disorders affecting the stomach zhang fu organ. Our insertion is perpendicular 0.3 to 0.5 tun. And once again here yeah, you've got to be cautious and avoid the dorsal artery of the foot which lies near to this point. Our next point is Shan Gu, stomach 43. This is the shoe stream and wood point of the meridian and it is located on the dorsum of the foot in the depression distal to the junction of the second and third metatarsal bones. So if we look at the image here on the right, he has the second metatarsal and he has the third metatarsal and we've got to be distal to the junction of these two bones. So the junction is referring to this part where the two bones touch one another. We've got to locate this and then we can palpate distal to this point looking for the depression in this region. This point can be used for facial and general edema, can be used for swelling and pain of the foot, abdominal pain and borborygmus. Our insertion is perpendicular or oblique 0.5 to 1 soon. Our next point is nating, stomach 44. This is the shing spring and water point of the meridian and it is located on the dorsum of the foot at the junction of the red and white skin between the second and third metatarsal bones. So we still here between the second and third metatarsal bones. And now we want to be at the junction of the red and white skin, which is usually just posterior to this crease between the two toes over here. This point is used for toothache, sore throat, epistaxis, and heat symptoms of the five sense organs. It can also be used for febrile diseases, acid regurgitation, diarrhea, dysentery, acute and chronic enteritis, and other diseases of the stomach or intestines. And finally, it can be used locally for pain of the dorsum of the foot and pain of the metatarsophalangeal joint, which is this joint over here. Our insertion is perpendicular 0.5 to 0.8 sun. And then the final point on this meridian is Li Dui, Stomach 45, this is the Jingwell and metal point of the meridian and it is located on the lateral side of the second toe. So here's our second toe, we're on its lateral side and we point one soon posterior to the lateral corner of the nail, putting us in this region. This point can be used for epistaxis, toothache, sore throat and other heat symptoms of the five sense organs. It can also be used for febrile diseases and epilepsy and mania. Our insertion is a perpendicular shallow insertion 0.1 sun or we can prick this point to cause bleeding. So this is the end of the stomach meridian. Next we're going to be looking at the spine meridian.